Hi, this is Tammy Gerke, a couple adventurers, artist, mentor, and doing the series, The Creative Innovators. And today I am so super excited. I have Leona Matuzak, and she is like one of my most favorite all time peeps, creatives, artists. I've known her for a while, a year now, a while. Yeah. So, Leona, I am so excited to have you here. Tell me who you are, what you do something about what you're doing how long you've been doing it go thank you well it's lovely to come here thank you for choosing me as one of my participants of you um i am leona matuzak i live in london in the uk and i do quite a few things really i was trying to think about how to summarize it so basically my favorite things to do are drawing painting and mosaics but my real passion is being involved with people so participation is like my number one most thing that gets me excited so I love to do community art community art is my favorite favorite all-time thing to do and I don't really mind how that takes form if it's mosaics if it's painting if it's drawing I don't mind I just love getting people together I love making art be like a social thing where it kind of brings people together from all different backgrounds and religions and traditions and we all come together regardless of what you believe in or who you are and do all that so that's my kind of favorite thing to do uh yeah i guess that's yeah <laughs> also i love it that's why i love you so tell me have you always been the creative kid i mean was this something that hit you when you were a kid and you've done this all your life or is this something that you you realized later in your life after you'd been i don't know doing the corporate job or whatever when did you first realize that this is what you're meant to be doing mm, i think i uh, it was sometime um we have a thing called gcse's which is um the exams that you do when you're about 16 years old and i kind of discovered art maybe a year before that so maybe when i was like 14 15 I had always been into music, so all throughout being a child, I was a musician. I played the harp, would you believe? I played the guitar, the recorder, all the kids play the recorder. Um, I played loads of musical instruments, so I was really musical. But then I think I was kind of going through a difficult time at school, and then all of a sudden I got really inspired about drawing. And so I would just kind of get, just really get into it, draw everything. I remember seeing um uh what's that the beatles film you know the yellow submarine the Be beatles film i remember seeing that and being like oh my god all these psychedelic colors and and all that and i kind of just yeah i just kind of really got into it so my gcse exam i loved and then i went to do a level which is when you're about 17 18 and i did um art and graphics and I did all these kind of really moody self portraits of me in a church and I was like kind of really rebellious and I was like kind of anti-religion and, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, so kind of like I just got into art from then really. And it sort of, it helped me sort of unconsciously at that age, I didn't really understand that it was helping me, but I definitely thought it was helping me through all that to kind of understand who I was and how I saw the world. So yeah. So art and creativity for you was a very positive thing. It was something that helped you deal with what you were going through as a teenager, which you know, that angst and all that stuff. Yeah. How, I mean, have you had negative feedback that you've had to deal with or has have, have most of your experiences been positive? Uh, what, you mean direct in regards to making art? Mm-hmm. Um, I have had all positive, I don't. I haven't had any backlashes or anything like that. The only thing that I had was after I did my first big installation, which was in 2006, was when I built um, a series of big seats out of cement, and they're in a park, and they're still there today, which is fabulous. Um, the year after that, I was supposed to do um, a big installation at a festival in just outside of London, and it was really exciting because they'd asked me to do a series of seats, it was gonna be in a circle, it was gonna be in the middle of the festival, it's gonna be this really big thing. And it fell through because they lost their funding and it literally, I was in pieces, do you know what I mean? It was like the worst thing, I was so upset. 
I didn't think I was upset really straight off the bat. But then as time went on, I was just like, you know, I don't think I can do anything. And I didn't make anything for two years after that. Two whole years? Two whole years, yeah. I, I can't imagine you not creating for two I know, years. I know. <laughs> that seems like an impossibility. Leona, not creating anything for two years is just... Yeah. What? It was also coupled what? with the fact that, like, I didn't really know how to make what I was doing into a business. Like, I didn't understand how I could... Because I wanted... I've always had really big ideas and wanted to make these big public artworks. So I kind of just sort of, like, didn't get it. I thought, if I don't make this happen by myself, how is it going to happen... And do you know what I mean? It just kind of just didn't work. And I was just like, why is this not working? And it kind of just snowballed. And then I just didn't do anything. Because <laughs> I was like, it's better just not to do anything. <laughs> so, so what made you decide, what made you decide you wanted to share your world, your work with the world? And then once you figured that out, how, how did you turn that into a business? Did you take schooling? Did you um, how did that, how did that work? Well, to try not to give too much of a long story, it was basically um, me and my partner, the, the place that we were living in was getting sold. So me and my partner were like, where should we go and live? And we were like, oh, let's have this big adventure. Let's go and live in this little country village outside of London, like two hours away from London. And um, it was actually was quite depressing for me. <laughs> it was like really fun at first. And then I was like, as the time went on after like three, four months, I was like, oh my God, I actually just can't live outside of London. I'm a city girl, I can't do this. Like, this is just not me, it's not my lifestyle. Um, I've made 50 gallons of wine. That's the most fun I've had out of it. It's made some homemade wine. <laughs> And then I was like, we have to go back to London. So part of us getting back to London, I just contacted every single artist that I could find who was in the public realm. And I found this really great artist and she was working, doing public artworks in schools with kids. So I just worked with her. So we went straight back to London and I started working with her on a part-time basis. And it was kind of like, that just got me back into it. I'd never worked with kids before um and she was just fantastic and I just felt really like I'd kind of found it was like the best job that I've ever had and I've hardly worked for any people I've mostly been self-employed but um it was the best job that I'd ever had because it was like closest to what I wanted to do the only thing in it that I didn't want to do is work for someone else so I did a couple of years with her and then I was like bye and set up all my own thing and that so, was 2011 or 2010. So that's actually like on the job training with yes. an artist, like apprenticing yes. with like, an artist yes. and and that happened because you reached out not because it kind of fell in your lap and somebody's no. like hey i need an apprentice i'm gonna need you come to work with me you yeah. reached out yeah. you you contacted people that you didn't know yeah yeah i did i did i just i contacted loads of people i actually worked for like three or four artists at the time um and it was just really cool because i could just get to see how a lot of people worked and how you could make something into a business because i've always wanted to make what i do into a business so i just thought there's no better experience than to just find some people that are doing it i mean there were some people that i worked for that wasn't really my kind of thing but it still really really helped do you know what I mean? Because it's like, even if it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do, I could still see a little element of what I wanted to do. Uh, so, yeah, so working for a bunch of artists at that time really, really helped. It just, yeah, just made me feel like more connected. And then I could like leave it and just be really comfortable with starting up my own thing. It was just, yeah, like kind of like you said, like an apprenticeship, like a training. And even more useful than going to university, like I always say to like kids now when they're stressing out about going to university, you know, just maybe, you know, hold off a second. And if, because if you've got ideas and you kind of know what you want to do, and a lot of kids nowadays, they kind of know. I didn't know for a long time. You know, I like to do a lot of experimentation and, you know, play around with so many things for lots of years, you know, all throughout my degree, it was all about experimentation. So, um, but if you kind of know, then just get out there, you know, because it's just well, don't make time or money on the degree. 
Well, and that's that's what you that's what you were also saying is that you experimented, you tried all different kinds of things. So you're working with different artists. Yeah. You're trying different types of art, but you're not letting one thing dictate the direction that you're taking. Now, yeah. when it came to talking to other artists and asking them for help and asking them to work with them, let's be honest, were you nervous? Were you excited? Were you did you create yourself a script or did you just get on the phone and say, Hey, uh, I'm an artist. I want to be working with you. How did you, how did you do that? I didn't label myself as an artist because I didn't feel comfortable with saying that I was an artist because I hadn't really done anything really apart from that one thing and a couple of other small little exhibitions. I didn't feel comfortable with, I don't know if you've ever had that, but I didn't, just didn't feel comfortable with saying I am an artist. It just didn't feel right. So I just said like, I'm just looking for work and you know I love what you do and it just made it all about them you know I'd love to help you and what you're doing and do you need anybody and you know blah 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 and I contacted loads of people and ended up getting a few results so I mean I'm all about I've always been about that I'm all about you know doing it yourself and getting out there because if you respond to adverts you're only responding to what's already out there but if you go off the bat and contact people you're making it happen so now when people contact me for work I will always be like yeah I really like you already because you're the one who's just come to me from nowhere because, you know, I don't advertise for any of my positions, but I do always need assistance. So, like, people contact me and I'm like, you're really cool. Thank you. You know, and I always look at their stuff and email them back and get them to come and try out with me. And, you know, some of them are my assistants now. So, yeah. So, and so, so that whole that whole idea that if you want to be an artist, you need to have a real job. No. It depends on your outlook of what a real job is. Because this is a real job. You've created it. Yeah. Just because you created it by working with someone else does not mean that it's not a real job. Oh, what, no. what are your thoughts on that when somebody says, yeah, but, you know, my parents want me, want me to go to, to college or my parents want me to work in, you know, whatever – instead of doing my creative outlet how, no, how you, can't, you can't really listen to anybody you can't really listen to your parents or anyone you've got to go with how you feel i mean i remember being at university and i had a couple of teachers and i don't think they really liked me because i was a, a kind of a bit rebellious and everything they said i kind of disagreed with <laughs> um and i remember going to a meeting with them once and them saying uh, you know, Leona, there isn't really a job for what you want to do, so you're going to have to create one. And I was like, no problem. That isn't a problem. I'm really happy to do that. Do you know what I mean? Because it's just like uh, everyone's unique and there's only so many job titles, so you might as well just make up your own one. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Or just uh, you're an artist and you can you can do anything you want. I mean, there's no, there's no problem, I, especially nowadays with everything that's going on. You know, I always say to people, like, I've got friends who have got the most random. I mean, I've got a friend who like, makes clocks and sells them on eBay and, and Etsy. Do you know what I mean? Like, and makes a full-time living. So you can do anything you want nowadays. There's, there is always an avenue for it, but you've got to, like, put yourself out there and not wait for the phone to ring. You've got you've to gotta be like, what, what do I want to do? How can I get the closest to it that I can? Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes it might not be the perfect thing. So you've got to think, well, I could just go for this in a small way. Do you know what I mean? And then, you know what I was saying about there was that one lady who wasn't the perfect thing for me, but I still learned little things from her. So, yeah, it's all valuable. You just got to keep an open mind, right? <laughs> just got to, you know. That, no, that, that, I, that's actually perfect because I, I think a lot of us are under this impression that you've got this idea in your head and if it's not exactly perfect and not exactly what you're expecting it to be, then it's not the right thing. Yeah. But you, if you're working close by, if you're wa working in proximity to what your ultimate goal is, you know, if, I've told people before, if you're working in a regular job, you don't start out as a CEO. Mm -mm. You start out at the bottom rung. Having your own creative outlet and having it be what you want it to be, you've got to start somewhere. So if yeah. you're working with an artist and you're kind of, well, 
you know, handing them paintbrushes as they're painting, you know, like that's not what you're going to do, but that's the idea. You're still going to be learning. You're still going to be gaining experience. You're still going to be bringing into yourself the things that you need to know as an artist. That's phenomenal advice. I love that, Leon. Absolutely spectacular advice. It takes time. I mean, it just takes time to discover who you are, what your style is, and you should never feel like that, that is something that's ended either. Do you know what I mean? It's not, nothing's finite. You can grow and develop and become whatever you want. If you, you know, if you're into drawing for 10 years and then you suddenly decide to make sculpture, that's fine too. Like it's all fine. There are no rules. There's, you know, that's what is so great about being an artist. You could just say, this is what I want to do. Or it's so, so great about being a human being. You could do whatever you want. You could do the same job for 40 years and then someday go, actually, I'm really bored of this i want to just do something completely different and that's fine do you know what i mean it's like i find it uh especially um inspirational and motivating living in london so living in a city where there is that i i found that when i lived out of london i i felt automatically more um concerned that there wasn't enough opportunities that's just me personally but now with the amount of things you can do, you can kind of live anywhere and do what you want. But that's my experience. I just feel more comfortable. You know, that inspires me having been in London and all that kind of stuff. So. So I know you, I know your personality. You're very self-centered. You're, you've got your, what most people would say, you got your shit together. I also know that there are times, you know, when you're not feeling so great. What do you do when there are times when you're like, you know what, I, you know, if you've got a creative block or you're not feeling motivated or you're just having a day or a few days where it's like the whole world feels like it's crashing down around you. We all have days like that. How, how do you deal with that kind of stuff? I try and keep myself accountable. So I'll try and keep something going regardless. So I'll have some kind of, think some kind of project that I'm working on that I can just always go to if I'm feeling like unmotivated in something else so maybe like multiple projects if I, one thing's not inspiring me I'll go to another thing um and apart from that I just other than that I will just not do anything I'll just like completely switch off go out with friends just go for a walk you know there's a few walks that me and my partner love to do and i'll just say hey do you want to go for a walk and he'll be like yeah and we'll jump in the car and go to some beautiful park you know like we'll just do stuff that's not creativity related or just just the mind space do you know what i mean so yeah so i'll either dive into another project or just get away from all of it <laughs> just go bye yeah, yeah and sometimes, or, sometimes yeah sometimes giving yourself that permission to go and just let this all go so you know what I, i'm I'm taking a break. I'm taking a couple of days and I'm not even going to think about this kind of stuff and being okay with that. Yeah. Sometimes I think some of us have a problem. <laughs> some of us have a problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. I think, um, I think you can't put too much pressure on yourself. Do you know what I mean? It's like we do, we're so hard on ourselves, especially people that like, you know, are go-getters and make everything happen themselves. We are super hard on ourselves. I'm really hard on myself. I'm super critical of myself. And I'm just learning not to be because I just think it's like you just can't really be like that. Do you know what I mean? It's just I'd rather have fun than be right in arguments and, you know, discussions. So if someone, like, wants to be more powerful than me or give some kind of more over impression than me or something i'll just let them because i just feel like that um it's just life's too short do you know what i mean and i'm kind of not interested in trying to have this big ego about who i am or you know what i mean i just i just want to make myself happy i just want to have a nice life and that involves creativity so if anyone else wants to be funny they can just be funny and then you know i'm pretty much like that across the board like even in the car you know, if someone gets all road ragey with me, I'll just be like, what? You know, why be bothered about this? You know, I'm sure you've got some bigger problems. So just don't worry. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, I think it's kind of a, it's just the way you approach life, you know, rather than just being about creativity. It's just the whole package. I'd just rather have a nice time <laughs> and make beautiful things. You know what I mean? And cheer people up and people have a nice time. That's really important to me. 
I think I think it makes a difference that we've got. Whoops, sorry, my alarm's going off. It's it's. Having a great attitude towards life and having our create our creativity being such a big part of that, it, yeah. it makes us happier people anyway. Yes. So, you know, because we're doing something we love, we're like, yes, yeah. life is amazing, life is great. And yeah. when somebody comes in and tries to ruin that because they're upset that we're doing what we want to do, yeah. it's like, you know, you made your choice. You, you get to deal with that. So yeah. and you could my make you can change a choice. You don't have to do that. Do you know what I mean? It's like anyone can do whatever they want. The only things that come in your way is like limiting beliefs, beliefs from other people, <laughs> you know, just, but just, they're all beliefs and beliefs are just thought thinking. Self -beliefs. The ideas that you have about yourself will get in your way and, and you've got to allow for yourself to be, <coughs> you've got to allow yourself to change. You've got to allow for yourself to say, you know what? I don't have to think like that anymore. Yes, exactly. So my last question, because I know you've got to you've got to go, um, is what kind of legacy do you want to leave this world? <gasps> That's such a good question, Tammy. I love a legacy question. <laughs> it's my favorite question. It really is. It's, it's my so favorite good. question. It's so good. Uh, I like I said, I want to make beautiful things, and I want people to feel uplifted and happy when they see my work. And you know, the process of making the work is really important to me. When I did the my first project, which is the seats in the park, um, I made them all myself, and I became a little bit kind of depressed by the end of it because I was making something on my own in a room for four months. And I'm just not that kind of person. I'm not that kind of artist. I love being around people. I see art as a social thing. Um, so for me, it's like I want people to come together and be part of something bigger than themselves. I want people to not only have an amazing experience, but see that product that they've made at the end of it and feel really proud. Um, you know, obviously with my coloring book, the reason that I made a coloring book is because I love people to be able to connect with my work in that way do you know what i mean it's so it's such a beautiful feeling to have uh made artworks and then people make them their own to me that's just like is the whole reason do you know what i mean for doing it i'm not precious about my art in any way that's why i like making things out of doors i don't even care if someone graffiti something because to me that's just kind of exciting it's like oh you changed it a bit what does that mean do you know what i mean so uh so the legacy i just i guess i just want like people just to um feel connected to the art feel connected to beauty feel connected to the place that they live in because obviously the works that i do have a relationship to the environment that they're in um you know and just and then i just feel uplifted because of that because i know that i've provided it's almost like sort of it's almost kind of in a charitable service i know that sounds weird but it's kind of like feeling like you're giving to people and they're receiving something amazing and creativity for me is like a vehicle to do that in um so yeah so that i think that's why it makes me feel so good because i'm always getting that kind of back and forth and that's the important thing to me do you know what i mean a bit like a performer and their audience you know when they get the applause i'm not about the applause at all but it's a similar thing like they do it for that moment where they made everyone happy and i'm kind of doing it for that moment to make to know that people feel connected through art so that makes me feel connected and yeah and then i feel really expressed and yeah i love working I, I love that even whether it's intentional or not you've created pieces that are going to be there for a while yes a lot of artwork you know, like this piece here may be here for a while, but it's not going to be around for like a long time unless somebody protects it. Yeah. But your piece, because you're, you've got huge stone pieces. If you go to her website, leonamatuzak.com, I've got the, the uh, link in the, in the comments. You, you can see some of her pieces. I mean, you, walls and, and stone, stone seats in, in uh, parks, and they're just gorgeous pieces. And obviously, they're sculptural pieces that are going to be there for a while. And they're amazing pieces. And I think that that, you know, whether you want that to be your legacy or not, 
in addition to you sharing your art with people and getting more people together and uh, together and having community, that is definitely something that's going to be a part of your legacy. And they're absolutely gorgeous. Oh, thank you. That's really sweet of you say. Well, it, I mean, it'd be really nice to have kind of like a London art trail. Do you know what I mean? I'm I'm actually working my way through the boroughs because in London, London's divided up into little sections which are called boroughs. Um, and I am kind of want to make, work my way through each borough and have kind of art in each borough. So I've got it in, t well, I've got a few in one and one in another. So that's not really working so far. I need to do some more. <laughs> I need to do some more. It'd be the Leona Art Trail. So if you ever come and visit London, you can go on the Leona Art Trail, which is pretty cool. <laughs> that would be pretty amazing. I know, I know Roy and I already have plans to come and see you, but, you know, way before you have all of that done. Yes. Because that's going to take a minute for you to get out there. Leona, thank you so much. I am so, I am so ecstatic that you did this with me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to end the broadcast. If you are interested in more information, Le I've got all Leona's information in, to, in the comments. You can go to her website. She's all over Periscope and Pinterest and Instagram and Etsy, Etsy everywhere. She's like all over the place. And her book, her coloring book, just so you know, is absolutely amazing. Thank so, you. Of course, of course. I color in it at night. I don't show people my pictures because they're something that are very important to me and, and kind of help me calm down. But I show Leon. I've shown you one, I know, but I haven't shown you any more. So oh, you. I'm excited about that. Yeah. So thank you very much, Leona. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Bye.